These are my disclosures. Um, well, I feel very humble uh, coming from a small country, hearing all these huge numbers from Egypt, Rwanda, Myanmar. But so I was thinking, what are Netherlands' best practices? Well, we're definitely good in water management and windmills. Uh, we're good in uh, bitter balls. If you've been here longer than 24 hours, you probably have had them, because at every reception we have bitter balls, which are just croquettes, but uh, around. Uh, we were once great at soccer. And we're, and hopefully we will be again. And we are very uh, good at harm reduction. And this is a sign that was uh, on the square on the other side of this hotel uh, last year, where there were a few uh, people who thought they bought cocaine, which was actually uh, a fentanyl. And there was this public campaign warning people about this uh, risk. Um, so this is uh, Amsterdam, and as you can see here, you can see all the canals. And we were once a uh, gay capital of the world. I think we're still in the short list. And um, so on these canals, every year, there's this gay pride where everybody goes out and goes wild and have a big party. And I'm going to talk to you specific about a project we have done here or doing aimed at Hep C within the MSM population. Uh, this is the epidemic in the Netherlands, very short. We're a low prevalence country, 0.16%. The majority are, of our patients are migrants. Uh, we have um, some previous drug users, and a small proportion are the men who have sex with men. Uh, but within this group, that's the only group in the Netherlands where ongoing hep C transmission is still occurring. And this is data from our National HIV Monitoring Foundation, and all patients in the Netherlands are in that database. And here you can see in blue that the uh, reinfection rate is quite high. And in other populations uh, like peewees, we don't have any ongoing hep C transmission uh, at the moment. Uh, these reinfections are not uh, typical for uh, Amsterdam or the Netherlands. It's going around everywhere, and uh, two-year cumulative incidence is up until 25, 33 percent. So one out of three HIV-positive men get reinfected within two years. So this is a, a potential big problem. If you then look in our, uh, again, data from the national database at how well we uh, do within the HIV population with respect to hep C treatment, here you see our treatment cascade. Uh, yellow is the recent data that goes up until December 2017. And as you can see on the right, the majority of our patients have been successfully treated and only two 200 patients nationwide are still in the ment of treatment, of whom the majority are aged people with a lot of other comorbidities and no uh, real transmission risk. So basically, we've treated everybody within our HIV positive population. But uh, so you can say you're ready, but a lot of modeling work has been done, and this is data from Switzerland that shows the effect of universal treatment in different scenarios where either the risk behavior. Uh, increases, and in the dotted line you see universal treatment, so if risk behavior increases, you do nothing with treatment only. If it stays the same, you see a slow decrease, but if you really want to be successful, you have to address risk behavior apart from treating everybody, and that's what we aim to do within our project. Our project is named uh, MC Free, so Amsterdam MSN Hep C Free. Uh, the PhD of is it Tamara Prinsebeck. She's there and she'll be at the poster, uh, and hopefully you'll join her. Uh, and within this program, we really like to target the epidemic that is going on in Amsterdam at different levels. So we want to target the individual at risk and also the community and increase knowledge and awareness about Hep C, uh, promote regular testing, early diagnosis, and uh, re re reduce risk behavior within professionals and the context, so the, the sex venues, the saunas, the clubs, we want to improve, um, uh, uh, create an environment which is, uh, enables risk reduction. In professionals, we want to improve awareness and attitude and knowledge and skills about hep C, about transmission route. Of course, we want to target the patient to reduce the risk, to reduce the risk of reinfection. We we're going to get insights in the network and also in the epidemic on what's going on. And I'll show you some examples. This is our website. It's called nomorec.nl. Um, and key in everything we do is that it's a 
cooperation with communities. So actually, community is leading in our uh, project. Uh, these are all actual role models from the Amsterdam community. And on the website, we have uh, concrete test advice that I'll show you some data on later. We have a testing service where people can order an HIV RNA self-sampling test. We have a lot of information about Hep C, about risk reduction, and again, concrete advices. People can order a toolbox, which I'll show you later. We have testimonials from the community. And the motto of our site and everything we do is see what you can do. So we can all say you shouldn't have sex, you shouldn't use drugs, but that doesn't work, obviously. But there are things people are willing to do. And that's the theme and the way we move forward. Uh, so this is one example. We have an um, online uh, tool that's a risk assessment questionnaire. And on this, in this tool, we use a questionnaire that has been validated previously within a large cohort in Amsterdam of uh, acute hep C patients. And uh, through this validation, with quite high sensitivity and specificity, we identified six key questions that predict the risk of becoming hep C positive. So it's condomless anal sex, sharing sex toys, unprotected fisting or injecting drug use, sharing of straws, and uh, ulcerative uh, sexual transmission infections. Um, on the website, based on what people put in, we have tailored advices, so 16 different tailored advices, and if somebody is HIV positive and scores more than two points, a hep C testing is recommended. Um, and if people decide to order a test, we have developed an, uh, a self-sampling a dry bot spot HIV RNA test that you see here on the right. This is the kit that people can order to the site, so anonymously. Uh, it's being sent to their home, and people at home do the DBS. They send it in, and we, in the lab, uh, uh, measure HIV RNA. So DBS for HIV, as has been mentioned previously, has been validated uh, before with a quite low detection rate limit, which makes it suitable for acute infections. And what Tamara did, she I did some experiments to look about the performance of this self-sampling. Actually, uh, this performs really uh, good, as you can see on the uh, right. And we also looked at the stability of the dry blood spot paper. And up until 21 days, the result still was positive. So this looks very, to us, very robust and usable within this setting. Um, so if people fill in the questionnaire on their preferences, and this is quite explicit, again, we want to reach our target population. So uh, you have these different uh, preferences, and then people can get tailored advice based uh, on their preferences, and they get concrete advice on risk reduction. Uh, we also have practical advice about disinfection. So during uh, sex parties, etc., people get advice on how to wash their hands, to clean their play area. We point at risk factors. So sharing loop, for instance, is an important risk factor that a lot of patients are not aware of. We have a lot of videos on how to clean your toys, how to wash your arms, and also how to clean the play area online. And one other thing we do online is we try to promote testing. So we have this huge online campaign that started uh, uh, earlier this year where we target events in Europe that our patients uh, are visiting. So again, these are all developed together with the community. Uh, so we have a Mas Palomas Pride on the, in, in Spain. We have the Barcelona Circuit, which is a large party in Berlin, Folsom. Those are all fetish BDSM-like parties, and we really target those people attending that by very targeted campaigns. So this is not a general public uh, campaign. It's really targeted um, to reach our um, people at risk. And these are our analytics from the website. So the website went live in the end of February. And up until now, we had uh, 15,000 uh, sessions, 10,000 unique uh, visitors. Uh, and what's really unique, and that's what something I learned, is the low bounce rate. So the bounce rate is the chance of somebody going to your website and then bouncing to another one immediately. And normally for websites, that's around 40 to 60 percent. And here it was only 25. But if you then look at the traffic generated by our online campaigns on dating apps and uh, other uh, websites, the bounce rate was even lower. So it was 8 percent. So I think this shows that we really um, to get to our target population, and also important that one third of our visitors are returning visitors, so they come back to read more about uh, uh, their risk. 
So if you then look at people who filled in the risk assessment questionnaire, it has been filled in up until now a thousand times. Um, and uh, 50, over 50 tests have been ordered, which seems quite low. But if you then look at uh, the score or the risk score, what I find interesting is one third of the people who or actually order their test, they have a low risk. So I'm not sure what it means. It can mean a lot. It can mean that somebody's hypochondric, but it can also mean that he's intended to do something or go to a party and is aware of a risk and wants to test afterwards. Um, if you then look at the effect of the campaigns, and here you see the different campaigns, and particularly the Barcelona circuit campaign generated a lot of website traffic, also Berlin did. And uh, with this campaign, 22 tests have been uh, ordered, of whom, of whom one was found positive. So again, a sign that we reached the right population. Uh, apart from that, we develop a lot of face-to-face -face strategies, and again, we do this with community. Here you see uh, people from the community working on our No More C toolbox that I'll show you some slides about in, in like two or three slides. We organized, have organized several themed events, again, within the city where people get a lot about of information about Hep C. There's peer-to-peer -peer education and also there's concrete advice to Amsterdam sex, sex venues on how they can facilitate uh, uh, risk reduction. So in all these campaigns, we target MSM. HIV positive, HIV negative, and also the PrEP users in whom we see similar uh, incidence and Hep C prevalence rates. And we try to target Hep C networks. So those are networks where condom like sex occurs, fetish genes, chem sex users, sex parties, group sex, and transgressive sex, so fisting and S play. Um, and um, we do that. Uh, with advice from the community, and I'm not sure if you already have plans tonight, but if you're uh, interested, these are basically all the clubs and shops around, just around here uh, in a circle of two kilometers, and everybody basically is uh, involved uh, within our project. Well, this is the toolbox, and actually from the whole project, this is up until now really the, the hit, like a lot of men like our toolbox. Uh, it's a box with a lot of tools that promote harm reduction. It has condoms, it has gloves, uh, it has wipes to clean a play area. There's a lot of disinfectants. And the most controversial thing in the box is a chem sex box. So a box people can use if they use chems during sex or drugs. And in the box there are uh, syringes and needles in different colors. So people have their own uh, needle. We have different cups and also we have a needle container. And people can get order it online. They get it at HIV treatment centers, STI clinics. Uh, GPs participate. So it's, it's all around. And up until now we have distributed uh, 155 of these boxes mainly through the treatment center and the STI uh, clinic. Uh, and this is interesting because this is the elevation, uh, evaluation of the toolbox. And again, the numbers are low because we just started and everybody who gets the toolbox is asked if he wants to fill in a questionnaire three months afterwards. Um, so the response rate up until now was 26%. But what I found very intriguing is particularly the last uh, uh, slide is that uh, over 87% actually use tools from our box. So they get it, but they actually use it. Um, and that's something that, 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 again, is a sign that this is something people want and actually they're using. Um, I'd like to end with uh, something completely else, because this is all very practical. Uh, there is some science in it. But uh, one of the things we really want is to track the, the epidemic. So we want to see at some point whether this has any impact. And uh, Jelle Koopse, who has a poster here, uh, together with Janke Schinko and Colin Russell, developed a um, system. It's based on an uh, electronic data capture platform that stores, stores both epidemiological data on PrEP use, on where somebody got infected, um, and uh, when, and combines that with phylogenetic data, so uh, sequence data, and using an open platform next train, which automatically processes sequences and builds the phylogenetic tree, we can combine epidemiological data with phylogenetics. And we've currently, like uh, two months ago, launched our beta website. And I just want to briefly show you what that looks like. So this is the phylogenetic tree. And if somebody can start a movie. So on the left, you see the different uh, epi data. Here you see in red PrEP use and non-PrEP use. 
you can change to a radial view to have a better look at uh, the tree. And uh, now it's changed to primary infections and reinfections. So it's really handy tool to real time monitor the epidemic. And this is just an example. These are all stored samples from uh, existing cohorts. People want to use this prospectively to really monitor what's going on, whether we have an impact, whether the new infections are uh, from existing clusters within Amsterdam or whether they are new introductions. Um, and with that, I'd like to end, not without thanking our whole team. Um, MC3 is a collaboration with the academic center I work in, but also with the Municipal Health Service in Amsterdam, the National STI AIDS Foundation, which is a policy-making uh, uh, institute, and AIGAD. Um, and we couldn't have done it without the support of a lot of uh, funders and supporters, the uh, uh, community and uh, the community advisory board. So, thank you. Thank you very much.